Good day. Welcome. This is your daily med with Lady V. Grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today as we continue to look at the Apostle, we understand that the children of God and more so the Apostle has to embrace suffering. So many times we ask ourselves if we are children of God and we are living up to the standard of what the Bible says we ought to do, we question so often why do we have to suffer. But the Bible tells us that he that must live godly, he that should live righteously and holy will have to suffer persecution. So this is a qualification that uh, no one likes to talk about. We would all be happier if the Bible did not speak of suffering as part of the life of a believer. However, Jesus warned us that we will face tribulation in this life. We are not of the world, the Bible says. Therefore, the world will not like the children of God. And so persecution will come in all kinds of ways. But as we say, the Bible warns us about it. So suffering is inescapable. It is part of being a member of the human family and a member of God's family also. And when we look at an apostle, certainly we know that these persons are aware that they must endure suffering. Not only to endure it, but to embrace it. One understands that in order to minister effectively to everyone whom God brings across their path, one must accept the fact that suffering is a part of doing so. It is necessary in order to bring forth God's perfect will in the hearts of others. So for an apostle, suffering is an occupational hazard. Things will come that will cause the apostle to suffer and to be, as it were, an endurance for doing what God wants such one to do, the work of God. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 3 to verse 10, Paul talks to us. He says he had to suffer troubles. He suffers hardships. He suffers distress. He suffers beating, imprisonment, uh, shipwreck sleeplessness, even hunger, and other difficulties. So we know that the apostle has to suffer for the sake of the gospel. One thing that suffering does is to help us to learn obedience. In this very thing, we see Jesus Christ himself, who is our example. In Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8 and 9, the Bible tells us that Christ himself learns obedience, and he learns it through suffering. Hebrews chapter 
5, verse 8, and verse 9. It says, Though he was a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. So Christ himself had to suffer. Even though he was a son, the son of God, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And the Bible says once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation to all those who will trust in him, to all those who will obey him. If Jesus Christ himself learned obedience through suffering, how much more then should we? Yes, the desire and ability to build the body of Christ and to bring it to maturity, an apostle will have to suffer. We know the apostle has the heart for the body of Christ, God's people, the church. A longing and burning desire to see believers and the churches built up in Christ and firmly established in the faith. As Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9 to 13 tells us. So Paul's letters provide a good illustration of this because in them the apostle openly reveals his heart for the people of God. We look at Romans chapter 1 verse 8 to verse 11. Romans chapter 1 verse 8 to verse 11. Listen what the Apostle Paul says. He says, first, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you, referring to the believers, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making requests. If by some means, now at last, I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. He says, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift so that you may be established. According to the writings of the Apostle Paul, he is praying for the believers. He is longing to see those that he needs to share a word with, a word of cheer, a word of hope, a word of comfort. In Galatians 4 and verse 19, another book that he wrote, he says, My dear children, for whom I am again in pains. So we know that this man is in pain. What? For the people of God and for the sake of the gospel. He wants to see Christ be born in them. And of course he wants them to be in unity and maturity according to to what the scripture says. So this man has the heart of the people and the church at heart. Ephesians 1 verse 16 and 17. We read from 15. He says, Therefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you 
in my heart. So he is always praying for the people of God. In Philippians 1 verse 8, he goes on to say, God can testify how I long for all of you with the effect with the affection of Christ Jesus. So Paul is saying, I love you. And God knows that I love you. Therefore, he is willing to make the sacrifice, to suffer, to preach the gospel, and to take care of God's people and the churches that were born out of his ministry. So, in addition to a heart for the body of Christ, an apostle has the spirit-given ability to build churches and to bring the believers to maturity. So, an apostle is also accompanied, as we know, by signs and by wonders and miracles that serves to build and establish the church of God. Let us in our prayers, like the Apostle Paul, remember the other believers and remember that the work of the Apostle is hard. But the Apostle must also know from the scriptures that suffering is a must. And that suffering must not only be endured, but suffering must be embraced. God bless you. Thank you again for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. It is free. Also share and comment and continue to visit and support my YouTube channel, Daily Med with Lady Beans.